Welcome to the first episode of the Sax Channel, and I'm your host, Scotty Stepp. In today's episode, we'll be discussing how to get the saxophone out of the case. Let's get started. When we start to first get the saxophone out of the case, there's some things we've got to make sure as teachers that we relate to our students. Um, when we're getting the saxophone out of the case, the most important thing is the safety of the saxophone. We do not want to let the saxophone hit the floor, uh, slip out of the student's hands. So this process will be very specific in uh, the process of how to put the saxophone together uh, in the proper order. Uh, make sure that when you're doing this, uh, that you've got, it's, it's always very helpful to have a saxophone in your own hands to demonstrate with as you do it. Uh, that's a very, very important part of, of, of good proper instruction of, of putting the saxophone together. So, for, for, the, for this video, the struggle is, is that I can't really get the saxophone in the case. Um, in, in the view of in the camera view. So I've just got it sitting here on the on the stand uh, With the components down below here And so I'll just be grabbing them as I would be getting them out of the case So just keep that in mind the first step and maybe one of the most important step is to make sure that When you're getting the saxophone if you're doing one-on-one -on -one or whether you're doing a whole classroom full of fifth sixth grade or seventh graders Whatever your grade starting grade is make sure that the saxophone is sitting on a stable surface uh, most of the time, in a classroom situation, that's going to mean that it's on the floor. Uh, remember that these students, if they're very beginner, sixth grade, they're not very tall, so it's going to be much easier for them to bend over and get the saxophone than me, for example. So, saxophone on the floor, or if you have the luxury of having uh, some good steady tables, sturdy tables for them to, to work off of, that will, be, that, will be just, that will be fine as well. So, assuming they got the saxophone on the floor, the very first thing that you want to have them do is take the reed out of the case, okay, put it in their mouth and wet it. Obviously for our purposes, as we're going th for my purpose, that I can't keep this in my mouth, I'll be talking to you like this the whole time. And that's no good. So I'll set this off to the side. We're just going to assume, just have to remember, I'm going to just assume that this is going to be in my mouth the entire time as I'm getting the saxophone out for the first time. And for that matter, as you play the saxophone the rest of your life. This is usually the first thing that you're going to do. Step number two, uh, the lifeline of the saxophone, the neck strap. Now, as you can see, obviously I already have mine on for purposes of this video. Uh, I can't stress enough that it's that is so important that you show your students how to operate the neck strap. Remember, they're going to have absolutely no clue what this thing does um, or for what it's for, for that matter. So most beginning neck straps are really difficult to operate. So it, the very first time that they're gonna use it, they're gonna to need to use both hands. So keep that in mind. So I always put the neck strap on, and I typically have to borrow one of theirs because I wanna use the same sort of neck straps they're using. And this is the neck strap that I've, I've found for, that, uh, for the purposes of this video. Um, now, I will usually have them, so in this one, I can grab the hook down here and I can operate this up and down. It's very hard for me to do, all right? So it's gonna be extremely difficult for, you know, for a youngster to do. So, and a lot of times you're gonna have that flat black buckle um, and, it, and it's even worse because it's really easy to get twisted. So, but what's important I think is that they grab the buckle as you're showing to operate it and then they grab two of the straps that go through this buckle. All right, now you'll have, to, you'll have to figure out and help them figure out which two straps they're going to need to, to grab together, but it's usually much easier. So if they need to pull it up, you're going to pull up on the buckle and down on the straps. All right, so I'm actually on the wrong side, so I'm going to pull down on these, this side straps and pull up here. All right, so that's, that's going to be a really good start. And I usually will go around to each student and I want to see them do this. As we're, as we're getting this process taken care of, all right? Once they can do that, I just make sure they've got it pulled up to what I think is the proper, what's gonna be close to the proper height, and they're in good shape. Now, another word on neck straps. This one, as you can see, is just a plastic hook. Now, these are okay. Uh, they're not ideal, all right? I prefer a metal hook uh, that I know is not gonna, you know, snap. I've seen these snap off, usually after years of use. 
so for a beginner, if they've got a brand new instrument and a brand new neck strap, it's, it's going to be okay. But just keep in mind that when they hook this in, it's not guaranteed that it's going to stay on there. A little bit more about that when we pick the saxophone up. All right, so we've got the neck strap on. The very next step we want to do is go ahead and have them grab the saxophone neck. Now, I really stress when I'm having them get things out of the saxophone, I want them using two hands for everything, if at all possible. So here we're going to grab the neck. I want them to have a really good, strong grip on the neck. All right, so a nice baseball kind of grip on the neck. All right, so we've got this. The next step that we need to do is they need to get their, their court grease. Now, usually the court grease they're going to have is going to be that chapstick court grease. No big deal. Um, this is just this is fine too. Uh, the court grease is probably a little more manageable because then they can just take the cap off and they can just kind of rub it on there like so. So that absolutely is fine. For me, I'm, I'm you know digging my finger in here and I'm, I'm rubbing it into the cork. This is super important. If you've got a new saxophone that hasn't had a lot of court grease embedded into the cork, then as you put that neck, that, that, that mouthpiece on and off of the neck, it's going to tear your cork up if it's not got some cork grease on it. So very, very important. If I'm teaching, you know, even my college students, uh, my private students, I still get several of them to come in as they're, they're putting on, it's like creak, creak, creak. And if that's happening, look, just put some cork grease on there. Uh, we're all guilty of it though. So the cork grease is the next proper step. After that, we are actually going to set I usually want them to set this down. We're going to set the neck back in the case. And then we're going to pick up the mouthpiece. Now, the reason, again, we're using two hands is that often what will happen is that we've got the mouthpiece, the ligature, and the mouthpiece cap all together. And that's really what we want. So in an ideal situation, then they've taken this out. They've got both hands. They're actually, I want them to slide the mouthpiece out of this. All right, so I don't want them to grab the ligature with the mouthpiece out of the mouthpiece cap. All right, so mouthpiece out of ligature and cap. All right, and then I want them to set this down. Then we're going to come back and we're going to take the ligature out of the mouthpiece cap. Now, this step is going to be, again, we're, what we're trying not to do is allow them to let the mouthpiece hit the floor and break, which is, again, I've seen it several happen. I've seen it happen several times, and it's happened to me on a more than one occasion. So set the mouthpiece cap back in the case. Now we're going to, what we're actually going to do next is we're going to set everything back down. We want to get our, our neck. We want to grab our mouthpiece. Now if we've got the cork grease on there and we want to put this on, we want to twist as we push. It usually goes on about three quarters of the way down the cork. All right. And I usually try to have the students line up the face of the mouthpiece in direct line of the bottom of the neck. All right. So we've done that. Next thing we're going to do, we've had this in our mouth the entire time making sure that it's wet on both ends. We want to wet, make sure we wet the tip of the reed end in our mouth. And we will rotate and also wet the butt end of the reed, like so, okay? If the reed is wet enough, we should be able to take the reed and place it directly on the face of the mouthpiece, and it should stay there without any ligature. And this is where we want to start. After that, we're going to take the ligature and we've got to make sure that we're, we, we reiterate the fact that we've got to take care of the tip of the reed and be careful. So we're going to slide the ligature over the tip of the reed and mouthpiece together, like so. All right. So this is usually the easiest way I find beginners to do it. We can have the ligature on and then slide the reed underneath the ligature, but it's a little bit more, more tricky to do. Um, so I just find that this is the easiest way to, for beginners to start even though it may endanger the tip of the reed a little bit more. So we've got the ligature on. We've got to make sure that when we slide the ligature on that it's below the file cut of the reed. And the file cut is in the factory where they've started the cut from the bark of the reed to the tip of the reed. And there's, it's a very, very distinctive horizontal line on the reed itself. Uh, I'll have a close-up later of this so you can see it. But we've got to make sure that the ligature is below that line. We want to see that line on the reed. All right, so just another, just a really quick word on ligatures. Make sure that ligatures are right-handed. Every ligature on earth that I'm aware of are right-handed ligatures. So if I'm tightening this up with my right hand, I've got it on correctly. Now, you'll have students that will put it on. They think the the 
the screws go on top of the mouthpiece. There are several ligatures on the market that actually do this. But if they do, the, the screws are now going to be over here for the top of the mouthpiece and not on this side, the left-handed side, all right? So this would be upside down for me if I was going to do this. Not to say that it wouldn't work, I suppose, but it's not really the way it's designed. Um, typically, ligatures will have a flat spot that's molded for the shape of the actual reed. So we wanna make sure that we're using it as a right-handed ligature like it's designed. All right, the other thing to keep in mind is that you'll have students that will try to put this thing on with the small end first, and this is as far as on, this will get it. So just kind of show them, look, there's a bigger diameter end and a smaller diameter end. The bigger diameter goes on like so. All right, and we want to put it on there snug, just pulling the ligature down over the mouthpiece. We don't want to tighten it yet. We now want them to actually take the reed and move it using their thumb and fingers, usually just the thumbs, and we want them to move it around left and right so it's centered on the tip of the mouthpiece. And we also want to move the butt end around left to right so that it's centered on the butt end of the mouthpiece. And I'll give a little bit of a close up here in a second just to show you exactly where that belongs. But once they've gotten this on here, and they've got it on there properly, we're just now going to tighten the, the, the ligature screws just enough to be snug. We don't want to tighten them down a lot, all right? So um, over time, the, the, the screws will snap. It's just a, a you know, lightweight brass material. So just snug, not real tight on there. So here we can see the proper placement of the reed on the mouthpiece. Directly above the tip of the reed, we can see a slight hairline view of the mouthpiece. Now, you'll have some some people teaching to push the reed against the mouthpiece to see that. You don't need to do that. You're weakening the reed. So try to avoid having your students do that. They should be able to look directly at the face of the reed square to the tip and should see that hairline of black. And then at the bottom, it's also very important if I can get this to show on the camera just right, um, that you can see, there it is, that the butt end of the reed is directly Aligned to the center of the mouthpiece at the bottom. Most, mouth, most mouthpieces will have a, a flat part that extends past the butt of the reed so that you can see that. So now we've got the, the mouthpiece, the reed on the neck. The next thing we want to do, again, thinking about safety, I want them to reach back over, grab their mouthpiece cap. All right. Now, this is kind of an optional step, um, but I like to do it for beginners because it also teaches them what this is for. It's twofold. One, it protects the reed. And number two, it keeps the reed from drying out as quickly while it's not being played. All right. So if you're going to have the, the saxophone out of your mouth for any kind of extended period of time, we want to put the mouthpiece cap on the mouthpiece. Again, as we slide this on here, making sure that we do not break the tip of the reed. Take your time. All right. Slide that on there like so. Once we're in this position, we're now going to put it back down in the case. All right, next step, I want, we're going to get the saxophone out of the case. For purposes of this video, let's just assume that this is sitting in its case. I have them take their right hand and I want them to grab inside the bell and I want them to tilt the saxophone up out of the case and grab a hold of the top end of the saxophone as soon as they can. Both hands on the saxophone at all times. So we're going to put that in their lap across their legs and as it's sitting in their lap across their legs, I want them to take the one of their the right hand and they're going to bend down at the waist and snap in the neck strap all right so they've got that snapped in it will take them a second to do it and then they can sit up nice and straight and let the saxophone you know wait to be on the neck strap all right so once we're in this position then i'll have them grab and now at this point at this point if everything is done on the floor They've got the saxophone sitting in their lap. They're actually going to need to bend over to grab their neck. Just remember, they're much closer to the floor than we are as full-grown adults in most instances. So um, it's not going to be that far of a reach for them. So they're going to reach over, grab their, their neck, mouthpiece. Okay, at this point, again, good firm grip on the neck. And then we're going to get this inside the receiver of the saxophone. Um, and then once we're in this position, We've got this very bottom line part going down the, the neck of the saxophone and put, I want them to put that right in line with this, this octave key post that sits on top of the saxophone here, all right? 
So, and again, we'll worry about adjusting that later once we get, we get the saxophone um, ready to play in, in the proper holding position. So once we're in this position, we're gonna take and tighten the screw here on the saxophone, the neck screw. Now, a lot of times on saxophones, there is gonna be another neck on the other side. This is the lyre screw for lyres that you know hold music here for marching band or whatever. So we're gonna actually tighten that. Um, so make sure, if they don't know which one, you can kind of show them or just tell them, hey, tighten up both, loosen up both. It's just a good way to start. They're not gonna care. Um, so, and again here, not real tight. If everything is adjusted properly, they just need a small amount of pressure to keep this neck from moving back and forth. Also, if they are struggling getting the neck in the inside the, the saxophone because it's it's really dry, all right, so it's really tight here where it slides in. You can actually, it's okay to use a little bit of cork grease on the receiver end, but I usually, if I put a little cork grease here, I just wipe it off with a clean cloth because um, I don't want it to be real gunked up with, with cork grease. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, and then it should slide in there pretty readily. If they get too much cork grease on there, um, what'll happen is then it won't stay in place. So you kind of have to play around with it. But again, just a light coat of cork grease, really good clean with a, with a nice cleaning cloth, um, usually will do the trick. All right, light tightening here of our saxophone neck screw. And we are in good shape. The saxophone is now safely put together uh, and it's ready to be played. Now, I'm not gonna go over actually how to hold the saxophone in this video. So tune in for another episode of the sax channel to, to, uh, to see how we do that, to get students set up properly to hold the saxophone. Okay, disassembly of the saxophone. The first thing that we wanna do when we're taking the saxophone um, apart is we probably wanna clean it. Now there are a couple different ways we can do this. If your students have bought the beginning cleaning kit uh, that comes with that kind of uh, the chamois, you know, really light tan color uh, thing with like a brush on the back. I don't like those. Um, I, the, the problem is they often get stuck in the, the top portion of the saxophone as you're pulling it through. Um, for me, I'll be honest, I'll show this as I would do it. Um, I take the reed off and then I have the, the silk, one of these silk cleaning cloths. And I can actually take the reed off of the mouthpiece with the ligature, like so. Take the ligature off. And then I can, in one kind of fail swoop, drop this down in here. Again, as you can see, now I don't have two hands on the saxophone, so that can be important. Um, but anyway, so I can just shove this in, in the bell like this. And I have to let, I have to remove my neck strap. Then I can turn this. And then usually I'll get this through the mouthpiece and I can pull this silk cleaning swab all the way. And usually I do like to connect my neck strap back. And then I can pull this silk cleaning swab all the way through the mouthpiece and the neck at the same time. So now I've cleaned the mouthpiece, I've cleaned the neck as well as the rest of the saxophone inside. These silk cleaning swabs are great. Um, I, do, I do recommend them. Um, but unfortunately, that's not what's going to come with your saxophone. So if you've, if you've got a class of beginners, they're going to have that uh, chamois, you know, uh, cleaner I was talking about before. So in that case, what I have them do is I have them take, once they've got, you know, the, the saxophone disassembled, which we'll go over in just a second. Um, once we've got it down to this point, uh, I'll have them actually then take the swab stick it through here and then drop it out of the end of the saxophone down here. Now, again, the problem is as they pull that thing up through there, oftentimes it's gonna get stuck at about right at this point, all right? We've got this little post inside the saxophone that's often gonna get hung up on. They don't last very long because of that. So it's okay at the beginning to use that. It's certainly better than nothing. Um, but after, after a certain point, you've got to encourage them to get the, one of the, the silk cleaning swabs that I showed you before. They're not really expensive. And they'll last a really long time. They're washable if they want to. The other thing that you'll find with saxophones often is they'll have um, one of those big, long, fluffy, you know, things that goes all the way down into the saxophone. So it comes all the way down there. They look awesome. You can use them like a lightsaber. They're great fun. Unfortunately, I don't think they're really good for our horns. They do a great job. You shove it down in there. We're, we're picking up moisture as they go, 
but then they've picked up that moisture and the moisture is still staying inside the saxophone. And really the only thing that moisture is really gonna hurt the saxophone inside of there is just the, you know, the, life, the lifespan of the pads um, because several of the pads on the saxophone stay closed and now we've got that moisture staying right against the pad the entire time it's in the case. So I really encourage all of my students to get rid of those long fluffy things as soon as possible. Or, you know, if they've got a locker, if they wanna shove it down in there and then pull it out and keep it outside their case, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I just don't like to keep them in the saxophone. Okay, now, as far as cleaning the mouthpiece, uh, for me, when I'm cleaning the mouthpiece and the neck, again, if they've got one of those swabs, it will not pull through this. So again, like those big, long, fluffy things that stick down the saxophone, they actually do make them that, that will shove through ones that are made for the neck and for the mouthpiece. Those are fine. There's nothing really wrong with those. Again, I like to have students pull them through both mouthpiece and neck and then have them in a different part of the case, not kept inside of there. But again, so for I think uh, 10, 15 bucks, you can pick up one of these silk swabs you can have them pull it through their neck, their mouthpiece, and the saxophone, either at the same time, or if you feel safer, have them do them at individual points, one piece of cleaning cloth to, to do the whole thing. Um, and of course, you're gonna get students that aren't gonna clean their saxophones at all, and you're gonna have all kinds of fun growth inside their mouthpieces. But we'll leave that, we'll leave that to your students. We won't, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm here to teach them the proper way, not the improper way. Disassembly. Disassembly is pretty much the exact opposite with a few slight changes. All right, so they've gotten the saxophone together and we've taken the, 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 the mouthpiece cap off. Um, so we have a couple different options here. At this point, if we're done playing the saxophone, you can teach your students to immediately take the reed off and put it in their, mouth, their mouth to, to protect it. Again, I like to get them in the habit of using the mouthpiece cap. It's such an important piece of equipment for our instrument. So I want them to put it exact reverse order. They're gonna put it back on top of there very carefully, loosen up the neck screw, take the neck out, put it back down in the case. Again, both hands on the saxophone, take one hand, pop off the neck strap, both hands on the saxophone, back down in the case. Now, it's really important, I see this time and time again, make sure, usually with the bigger saxophones, when they put it back in the case, if they're doing it properly, they're gonna set the big end down in the case, and then they're gonna have this hand up here. Now, what I often will see them do is take the saxophone and then drop it. All right, and there are, there are the side keys and these keys down here for the low end of the saxophone, they're very delicate. If they get bent, you've got all kinds of problems. All right, the saxophone's not gonna work properly. So when they're in this position, I want them to make sure they drop this end here. And they take the other saxophone and they set it gently down in the case. All right, do not let it drop, all right, into the case. One piece of equipment I did not have because I already had the saxophone out on the stand um, is the mouth, is, is the octave key cap protector. So it's a little black plastic piece that goes in here. You've got to make sure that the saxophonists are using that cap. It is super important for their horns because what that cap does, that cap protects this octave key post because as you're getting the saxophone in and out of the, key, in, in and out of the case, it's really easy to get this octave key mechanism really bent. And if that's bent, you, it's it creates all kinds of problems. So make sure that once the saxophone's back in the case, they grab that little plastic piece and they put that plastic piece back in the saxophone. All right, so we'll get the saxophone back in the case. Again, so now we're here. Usually at this point, I want them to take the mouthpiece cap back off, put it back down in the, in the case, loosen up the screws. When they take the reed, now at this point they can take the ligature off, reverse order, or if they feel more comfortable, I think most of us actually do, then they can slide the reed out first, the ligature's still in the mouthpiece, back in the mouth to protect it. Now we've got this, so I want the ligature off of the mouthpiece and off to the side or back in the case. If you leave the ligature on here, with especially if you've already taken, the, if you've already removed the reed and you start and you grab here and you start twisting this off of here, you're actually gonna be sliding this ligature back and forth across the face of the mouthpiece. And over time, 
this will damage the face of the mouthpiece and that's it, this is a crucial part to making sure that, we get, that we're getting good response and having a good sound. So make sure that we're in this position, we take the ligature off. Now we've got here, now we can twist and pull. We can set the mouthpiece off to the side, neck back in the case. Now, usually there's a little hole inside the case that this mouthpiece cap is sitting into. And then what will students will do is they'll just take and they'll just drop it down in here. Now again, I don't like this because I want to protect the tip of the reed, which is vitally important, and also the face of the mouthpiece, sorry, the tip of the mouthpiece and the, tip, and, the, and the face of the mouthpiece. So I always like to make sure that I've got a, a broken reed or something where I can put it back on the mouthpiece and now I can slide this back in here. And now it's gonna be much, much better protected. The mouthpiece isn't gonna be jangling around inside this metal cap. Uh, I also prefer the plastic caps. Um, the metal caps look fancier, uh, but the plastic caps don't seem to beat up the mouthpiece as much. And certainly when we're talking about beginners, they're not gonna be taking really good care of their, their equipment to start with. All right, so that's the, that's the disassembly of the saxophone. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of the Sax Channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. My name's Scotty Stepp, and we'll see you next time.